Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm very excited today to have Bill Koenig joining me. I've mentioned his book, Eye to Eye, on the show many times, and we're going to be talking about it today. Bill is a journalist, and he served as a White House correspondent in 2001 and 2002. He has a new service called Koenig World Watch Daily. His website has constantly updated stories from a large variety of news sources and can be found at watch.org. I read it daily for world news from a biblical end times perspective. Bill, it's an honor to have you joining me Thank today. you, Jimmy. My pleasure. Well, I just have a lot of admiration for your work. And you are a journalist, uh, watch.org. I look at it every day. Mm. And just because if it's on your side, I know it's, it, you know, it's, it's good. Thank you. And you have on there uh, a really good uh, in times perspective of what's what's important and what's going on. Your book, Eye to Eye, now this this is the book here, now the the uh, subtitle, Facing the Consequences of Dividing Israel. Okay. So when the first time I saw this book and I began to read it, I was dumbfounded because I'm an end times guy. I've kept up with the end times forever. I had no idea that there were this many uh, events that had happened in the United States as a direct result of our foreign policy toward Israel. Why don't you talk about that just a minute? Well, you know, Jimmy, from you know having served at the White House for 20 years, uh, had the benefit of, of being there for a lot of activities having to do with the state of Israel, and yeah. especially right after I moved to D.C., left uh, Dallas to move to D.C. right after George W. Bush took office. And I continue to notice that when we would have meetings with the Israeli leaders or the Palestinian officials, we would have something major happen in the United States the same day or within 24 hours. And myself and David Dolan, a few other people had watched this. John McTernan had written something about it. And so we started connecting the dots and had the opportunity in uh, early 2001 to write Israel, the Blessing of the Curse. It's out of print. Uh, uh, this book, I to Eye, uh, took over for where, where I left off there. And I just uh, I was amazed uh, just through the research from what I'd seen and what I saw previous to that. Uh, you know, 1991, October 1991, George Bush, George Bush's father is in Madrid, Spain, calling on Israel to give back land they obtained in the Six-Day War. And at the very time he's at a podium in Madrid, Spain, calling for this, the perfect storm was sending 30-foot waves into his home in Kennebunkport, Maine. Hmm. It wasn't the next day or a week later. It was at that moment he was calling on Israel to give up their covenant land. So uh, I even warned President George W. Bush right after I became a White House correspondent for an incredible period of time and a very yep. biblically important period of time. Uh, I warned him, don't touch the land in two letters. And then 9-11 happened. And what happened, Jimmy, 17 days before 9-11, George Bush was working with Crown Prince Abdullah of Saudi Arabia on what was going to be the most comprehensive address ever given, by, ever given to the UN in September. And on 9-10, the work was done. It was going to call for the division of Jerusalem, the fulfillment of the UN resolutions 242-338, and two states. Something his dad or Bill Clinton would never have done. Never have done that. But 9-10, the work was completed. Prince Bondar from Saudi Arabia, who had worked actively on the peace deal, was celebrating in his mansion in McLean, Virginia. And then he woke up the next day to the horrific incidents of 9-11, the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And one other thing here, Jimmy, the Lord reminded me that he did not produce the evil of 9-11, but he didn't stop them. That's right. Well, and Jonathan Kahn, who we've had on the show here many times, he he just says, God God takes down your defenses. You know, the the, the Harbinger, his book, The Harbinger, Absolutely. talking about what happened to Israel, what happened here, is God's not making it happen. He's just allowing it to happen because, but, there, but there's a direct cause effect relationship between our foreign policy toward Israel and what happens, and these are many times, if not most of the time, historic natural disasters. Certainly 9-11, but natural disaster, and we're going to talk about Ian here in just a little bit. When you talk about, you know, 30-foot waves at Kenny Buckport while he's making the speech, and it was a freak storm. Totally. 
And that's why it was called the perfect storm, because you had a bunch of things that had to happen that produced the perfect storm. And rather than going from west to east, it was going from east to west, which is totally an unusual event, meteorological event. And that was a, that's why I was coined the word perfect storm. So in your book, you have, what, 120 something? 100, 126. 126 specific examples. And I encourage anybody, if you're, a, if you're a skeptic, get the book. You won't be a skeptic anymore. You can't make this stuff up. This, this was in the news. Give some other examples of the cause and effect of foreign policy toward Israel and natural disasters in America? Well, I think uh, one, one uh, event that everybody remembers is Katrina. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was on the front page of the, the newspapers in Washington for 34 straight days, whether it was the Washington Post, Washington Times, or the Baltimore Sun. This event was so enormous. And what had happened is 70 or actually 9,500 Jews were forced from their home right. by the Schroen Bush plan. And within a few hours of the final eviction of Jews that the Lord had put in their heart to occupy this land, a weather-related storm, uh, uh, even a, a remnant of a storm that was near the Bahamas, developed into a tropical depression. And within 48 hours, it was hurricane or tropical storm Katrina, then hurricane Katrina. And it was devastating. And um, I had a friend that had been at the White House for uh, quite a few years, 30 years actually, and she said that President George W. Bush never got over the consequences of 9-11 and Hurricane Katrina. That's that's significant. That's exactly right. Uh, So the Joel 3, God is saying, I'm going to bring all the, the nations in judgment. Um, and talking about the Valley of Jehoshaphat, talking about the Battle of Armageddon. And it says, because they've scattered my people among the nations and they've divided up my land. And so the premise of your book here is God is angry. God is angry with the United States, not necessarily their, our viewers, not necessarily you and me. But when we elect presidents, when we, especially in this case presidents, when we elect people whose foreign policy toward Israel allows for the division of the land, allows for uh, the two-state solution. Now, this is true today with our president and the prime minister, the current prime minister of Israel, Pete. And so let's, let's just get political here for just a minute. Not, not Democrat, Republican, <clears throat> but helping people to understand the consequences of how they vote. So Israel, if you're walking into a voting booth, the foreign policy is a big issue with you, right? Without a doubt. And uh, one other note, um, I have 126 events in eye to eye, and then we had about another 12 with during President Trump's time in office. And we've had almost a trillion dollars worth of weather-related disasters that corresponded to what we were doing with Israel at the time. And even beyond that, Jimmy, 9-11 cost us six to seven trillion. Wow. And the coronavirus cost us six to seven to eight trillion. And both of those have a connection to what we're doing with the land of Israel. So to phrase this is the God of Israel, as you know, the God of Israel gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the land from the Euphrates to the great river, the, the river in, in uh, Egypt. Right. And this is the covenant land of Israel. Israel's never occupied that. No. But as you know, this is his land. It's holy land. And no one has the right to uh, divide or partition, as you mentioned in Joel 3. You know, this land is special. It's God's land. Yeah. And anybody, anytime someone attempts to create an Arab state in Judea, Samaria, and East Jerusalem, the biblical heartland of Israel, there are consequences. And I also notice the greater the pressure on Israel to divide this land, the greater the corresponding catastrophe. Now, that's very interesting. So you and I were talking about, of course, I read your book, and now, now this is the way I think. And so whenever I see a natural disaster, I begin immediately to think. Record setting. Record yeah, setting. Yeah, okay, right. so there was a couple of years ago, I believe it was in December, an, a, a series of tornadoes, the largest, the longest tornado in American history. Went through four states, and then it ended up in Kentucky, did historic damage at the exact same time. Uh, we were, the Biden administration was trying to force the Jews to stop building settlements 
in uh, East Jerusalem. And we also know through President Biden's recent trip to Jerusalem, he went to East Jerusalem, would not allow Israelis to go with him. He openly declared he's for a two-state solution and for giving East Jerusalem to, to the Arabs. And so, again, we're going to talk about in here in just a minute, but we're seeing historic natural disasters happening still in America directly related to the foreign policy of America. And I might add, uh, Jimmy, because a lot of your audience is very appreciative of all the things that President Trump uh, did f- for our country and also for Israel. Right. And I had the opportunity recently to interview uh, Ambassador Friedman in Israel. And and I mentioned uh, we've never had a more pro-Israel administration. No. Uh, Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo, Nikki Haley, John Bolton stood for Israel in port at the International Criminal Courts. Friedman, a biblical scholar that can speak Hebrew, that knows the Tanakh or the Old Testament quite oh. well. Oh. And I mentioned... I. Um, that President Trump did more for Israel than all our presidents combined. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem when others promised that. He got out of the Iran nuclear deal. He acknowledged Israel's sovereign right to the Golan Heights, which is critical, as you know, for their defense. Secretary of State Pompeo said the settlements are not illegal in Judea and Samaria, according to the San Remo Agreement of 1920. Wow. Uh, defending Israel at the international criminal courts. We've never had an administration like this. And we tried. We did a lot to try to persuade uh, President Trump not to get involved with the land, to divide the land. Hurricane Harvey was his first supernatural disaster. that hit Houston or hit the southern part of Texas very strong in Houston. And I thought, well, what, what was happening at that time? And I found out that uh, Jared Kushner, really the architect of the Trump-Israel oh, sure. plan, sure. he was in Qat- Qatar, he was in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, he was in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, he was meeting with Egyptians or Jordanians on what Israel was going to agree to in order of having the deal of the century. And then Hurricane Harvey developed out of a remnant down in the Gulf. So, was now that, was there a part of what he was trying to do that would take the land away? Oh, absolutely. He was trying to get the Arabs to go along with his plan, which was going to call on Israel to give up 70 to 80 percent of Judea and Samaria. Right. The biblical heartland of Israel. So absolutely. Because it was it was not obvious. I had to dig through Arab press and I, I did a lot of reading. I go, this storm, there's has to have been something that was taking place with Israel's land at the time of this Hurricane Harvey because it was such an unusual storm developed out of a remnant similar to Katrina. It just kind of developed. Yeah. It wasn't from the Caribbean or off the west coast of Africa. It was very unique. And then I found that out. And um, we lobbied hard. You know, President Trump, don't do it. Don't go. Don't get involved. Don't don't push. And we we pushed hard. Uh, but there was also others that were uh, on the within the Christian community that were excited about the Kushner oh, Trump yeah. peace plan. Well, and, and Jared Kushner had a huge amount of influence on Trump in that area. Enormous. In, in that arena. Absolutely. So the you know, you quote Zechariah on your website, watch.org, Zechariah twelve, that God's gonna make his the Jerusalem a burdensome stone. Absolutely. And anyone who tries to touch it is gonna be cut in pieces. Do you believe that we're living in that day, obviously, where Jerusalem has become the international issue and, and to those surrounding nations? Uh, no, no doubt about it. And I think, uh, Jimmy, what's fascinating about all this, despite our president's errors, they are just accelerating final day events to the conclusion of an eventual right. peace deal. That's when I talked to audiences, I said, you know, uh, Bush and Clinton and George W. and Obama and Trump all had a biblical prophetic role. And I think what's important, and, and things really accelerated dramatically, January 28, 2020 at the White House, Trump introduced his plan with Benjamin Netanyahu in the audience mm-hmm. and uh, very supportive of the deal. And he came up with a map, a map that had never been, there had never been a specific map from the administration that he, uh, his people put on Twitter. So 76 million people saw this map, and uh, within about 41 minutes of the map being posted on Twitter, we had a 7.7 earthquake shake the Miami Financial District. <laughs> and usually, it's unbelievable. It, it is. It's unbelievable. And then that afternoon, according to Peter Navarro, 
things were breaking loose because of coronavirus. He was telling Fauci and Azar and Mulvaney, the chief oh of staff, my God. we need to do something. This is going to be a disaster. We need to close close the air air travel to China. Look at uh, closing it to Europe. This is going to be a disaster. They laughed off Peter Navarro. Navarro says, okay, I'm going to put this in memo. Next day, January 29, he put a memo, says this is going to cost a million to two million lives. Wow. It's going to cost us $3.7, $3.8 trillion unless we do something serious. He wrote it to the National Security Council. Also, President Trump, that day they started the, started their uh, uh, coronavirus planning task force. What also happened, Jimmy, within 24 to 48 hours, every major leader around the world said, no, we have our plan. There's a Trump plan, but we have our plan, the two-state plan. We want a, we want a balance between the Israelis and Palestinians. So you had Merkel, and then you had Johnson, yeah. and then you had uh, Macron, uh, the Arab leaders, er- Erdogan and others. They all ha- So within 20 to 48 hours, along with the Vatican, they all established their position. Seven weeks later, we had three billion people in lockdown because of coronavirus worldwide. And the direct connection, and you're making the direct connection now. I, I absolutely loved President Trump's uh, positions on Israel. Absolutely. So the one thing that he did wrong was to allow for the division of the land of Israel. Now, it's my understanding, I actually said this in a message, and someone corrected me in this, and and I want to get your perspective on this. In, in the deal of the century, there was a part of East Jerusalem given to the Arabs. Is that correct or is that incorrect? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's there's still a debate over that, Jimmy. Uh, he basically said uh, Jerusalem's not to be divided. Uh, it's Israel's, but at the same time, there was some kind of behind the scenes language that might have possibly carved a part of East Jerusalem out yeah. for the Palestinians to have a capital. You know, the uh, and I talked to Trump of, uh, Trump administration officials about this. They say, uh, they say well, uh, we never really expected the Palestinians to comply anyhow. Uh, they, yeah. they have a history of that. Sure. But nonetheless, it was they were going to be 70 to 80 percent of the covenant land of Israel, Judea and Samaria, was continuing. That narrative was continuing. And it continued the two-state narrative, uh, even all the way up to the Abraham Accords yeah. of the summer leading up to the uh, September 15, 2020 signing of the Abraham Accords. That was the narrative. Uh, Arab plan, two-state plan. UN resolutions and continue that once again that narrative of of a future Palestinian state. Well, you you said <clears throat> every president has had a role in kind of expediting the end times, and people ask me because Biden policy wise he's a disaster, you know, and related to Israel, related to you know transsexuality, all the stuff that he that his administration has been trying to um, promote. Um, but someone asked me, why, why on earth would the Lord allow President Biden to be elected? Because he had to allow it. You know, it had happened. Well, first of all, you know, we're a democracy. You know, I know we're a constitutional republic, but we elect presidents that way. And um, I believe that he is expediting end times events very quickly. Not in a good way. No, absolutely. Yeah. A couple things here, Jimmy. Um, coronavirus led to uh, vote by mail. And there, there's always been vulnerability to vote by mail. Right. I've followed the election 2020 and thereafter, even to this day, on the way out here, I'm still following it closely. Uh, I believe there was things that happened that affected the outcome of that election. There was three, four states there were only 10 to, 10 to 12,000 vote difference. Right. Um, that was our concern, uh, the, that there was going to be fraud. He didn't win by that much because, you know, 50, 60,000 votes in those five yeah. or six swing oh, yeah. states... Trump would have been the president, but uh, we had the opportunity uh, to to warn the administration that this could cost them politically uh, if they went forward with this, and sure enough, it did. Absolutely, and that was a a, a big concern that if they went forward, it, it would going to be costly, even to the point that if you go forward, it could cost President Trump reelection. And uh, there's no doubt it, it had an effect. Also, a quick note here, uh, in the summer of 2020, there were some major record-setting hurricanes that all happened and occurred at the time of effort on the Abraham Accords. 
when they back off for a week or two or a month, nothing would happen. As soon as they got involved again, more hurricanes. Were they in the Abraham Accords, were they um, promising to those uh, Arab nations that there would be a division of the land of Israel? Was that a part of the Abraham Accords? Well, it was basic. What, what they said was, uh, we'll stop the extension of sovereignty to 134 Jewish communities, which that's what the Arabs and the international community were after. Right. And that was part of the inducement, and that we'll move forward. My problem with the Abraham Accords, it, it keeps the two-state narrative going. Right. The Arab plan of 2002 was re-mentioned. Right. Uh, the UN resolutions 242-338 were mentioned again. Right. And so that, you know, my opinion, biblically, it's not even my opinion, biblically, Israel has the right to those 134 Jewish communities. Of course they do. Right, rightful extension of sovereignty. But what happened? We had a very disruptive summer, record-setting hurricanes. We had so many events, disruptive events, that they had to go into the, uh, the Greek alphabet. <laughs> yeah. that, that is incredible what was happening. But what's really interesting, September 15, 2020, in a signing ceremony at the White House, you got Netanyahu and the Emirates leader and the Bahrainian leader and Trump. They signed the agreement, and down in the corner of the TV screen across the country is the signing ceremony and this new hurricane, Sally, that was developing into a monster storm. So the day of the signing, wow. it's on the screen. That night, Hurricane Sally came ashore in the southern Gulf Coast. The next day, Kushner's on all these networks talking about the Abraham Accord signing, and then the corner, once again, is this Hurricane Sally. One of my readers from the East Coast said, do you realize that Sally's Hebrew derivative is Sarah? Oh, gosh. So in other words, Hurricane Sarah in the Hebrew name was slamming into the Southern Gulf Coast as the Abraham Accords were signed, being signed. This was an emphasis by the God of Israel that the covenant land of Israel is for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and not their descendants because the narrative of the Abraham Accords oh, yeah. is this land is for all descendants of Abraham. And then 72 hours later, Netanyahu goes home, Israel goes into a three-week lockdown for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Right. And cost him five, uh, five billion shekels. And that was one of the incentives of the Abraham Accord. We're gonna make a couple billion dollars, US dollars, over the next couple of years. Well. They got a bad start because they're, they're out. They're out five billion shekels right after the signing in the next three weeks. Well, the one of the things that your book does it did for me, and you're just you know making it even more vivid here is there's a direct connection between the events that are happening in the world and what's happening in Israel. Israel is the apple of God's eye. He, the, everything when you go to the Bible, when the Bible says north, it's north of Jerusalem. It's south of Jerusalem. East is east of Jerusalem. God, you know, God loves everybody. God loves, and God loves the Arab people. But he has a special relationship with the land and the people of Israel. And so what you're saying is, it's a special relationship in two ways. He blesses those who bless Israel. He curses those who curse Israel. And when you're actively working to divide that land, he takes it personally. Now, let me, let me just say, because we're going to start talking about Hurricane Ann, the the end of this age happens at Jerusalem, according to Zechariah, according to Revelation. The last scene of this age is the entire world gathers against Jerusalem. If it were not for the United States, the United Nations would have already tried to impose the two-state Absolutely, solution. Yeah. absolutely. So only the United, well, of course, now with President Biden, but you also have Lapid kind of on board. But the, the, this thing's going somewhere is what I'm trying to say. The, the entire Bible, is focused on the nation of Israel, and prophetically, it's all going to come down to the city of Jerusalem. And so this is a big deal. So Hurricane Ian, and we are very aware, and Bill and I have talked about this, of all the suffering and the damage that's going on in Florida right now, it's horrific, and our hearts are with every person, our prayers with every person right now who has suffered or has relatives or loved ones that are suffering because of this. So nothing that we're saying, we want to say in any way that's insensitive to uh, what has taken place. But I, I want to say this at this time. So I want to talk about 
the cause and effect here. Let's start with Hurricane Fiona because there's a connection there and then we'll talk about Hurricane Ian. September 14th, Biden's Middle East envoy, one of his top envoys, is in the Middle East re-establishing, or not even re-establishing, but reconfirming Biden's total support of the two-state plan. This is September 14. Within a few hours, Tropical Depression 7 formed. This storm became Fiona. Fiona developed, produced a tremendous amount of rain, sat in Puerto Rico and moved on. And, and then the following week, the UN meetings. Right. September 21st, Biden's at the UN and reaffirms his administration's commitment to the two-state plan. And there's, this is a time to move forward. The next day, Lapid is at the UN and talks about his full support of the two-state plan. Israeli prime ministers don't do that at the UN. Right. And you could hear a collective uh, fury within Israel, in the political circles, the fact that Lapid, who'd been influenced by Biden to do this at the UN, and then later that afternoon, Biden congratulated Lapid for his statement about the two-state plan and then Canada's Trudeau sent out a tweet fully supporting Lapide's comments about two-state. Fiona was working its way into the Atlantic. Some people thought it would hit Bermuda, but right after Trudeau made those statements, it made a north-northwest turn and ended up hitting Canada the next day. The most intense Atlantic storm in the history of Canada, 24 hours after Trudeau complimented Lapid on making his decision. And this is, this is a statement we've made consistently uh, during this, this interview, and that is historic. These are historic That's catastrophes. Key. These are the biggest, Jimmy, these are the biggest events. I mean, the 126 events in eye to eye and the 14 after, these are record-setting events. These are the biggest in U.S. history. And that's what's so key. And I noticed the greater the pressure on Israel to comply, the greater the corresponding catastrophe in America. So, and, and you're a journalist, and, so, and this is why I love your information, is because as a journalist, you observe what's happening and, and report on it. Start you're seeing not, the patterns. You're, you're not a preacher. You're not trying to, you know, take the Bible and, you know, manipulate the facts. These are things that have happened that all the world sees, okay? The only difference is they don't make the connection mm. uh, related to Israel. So, in uh, the United, you believe that the United Nations preceded in uh, the formation of in. Yeah, between uh, Biden and Lapid's comments and then Biden's full support to the public of Lapid's comments, uh, early September 23rd, around 5 a.m. in the morning, tropical depression, nine forms. This becomes in, and it's just, in. it's never the catastrophe or never the event, the, the the weather-related event, whether it's tornado outbreaks, earthquakes, or hurricanes, it's always a, an event first, like what Biden did, Lapid did, and then the tropical depression forms right Right after. Well, Hurricane Harvey, when it hit, um, it, it, and I have a lot of friends down in that area, uh, and it was just horrific. Uh, the, one of the churches that we're very friends, good friends with there flooded the church, um, you know, just all the, the area there. God isn't against Florida. God isn't against Texas. God isn't against Louisiana or all the places where these events happen. God is against an administration uh, that is uh, that is elected publicly, popularly, but is against an administration trying to put pressure on Israel to divide up the land. And so when you see the historic nature, the horrific, you're talking about the trillions of dollars that these things have cost, you're getting an idea of how angry God is. God's very angry with with these, uh, not the people, the individuals of Florida or Texas or anywhere. He's uh, furious at the spirit that is behind uh, these events because it's anti-Semitism. It is against the Jews having their homeland and having it peacefully, right? That's exactly right. Their biblical heartland of mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and, and I re- reemphasize that the God of Israel gave the land to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants to occupy. That's right. And he gave the the Arab and the, the Middle East uh, countries a tremendous amount of land oh, yeah. and a tremendous amount of uh, natural resources, oil, natural gas. He blessed them enormously. Yeah. But there's this obsession, not only with the Middle East Arab leaders and Shiite and Sunnis, the international community. But that's, you know, that's the beauty of this is why does a country the size of New Jersey right. and a city of Jerusalem receive the kind of international attention it receives all the time? And, and it's remarkable how God has done that. And you mentioned uh, uh, Zechariah 12, 3, Jerusalem will become a burdensome stone. Yeah. Every Middle East leader right now and every leader of the world is in favor of dividing the city of Jerusalem. Yeah. And there's enormous consequences. Is there any other capital in the world where there's any serious discussion of dividing Moscow or dividing Tehran or dividing anywhere else? Only Jerusalem. And the the Arabs were not interested in uh, Israel, the land of, you know, back then, uh, Palestine. They weren't interested until Israel was interested. And then everybody starts acting like it's something really valuable. It was a wasteland when Israel came. Absolutely. And so, and now, uh, every time I go back, we're going back again in December, every time I go back, it's more beautiful all the time, uh, the Jewish control part. It's incredible. It's incredible. So, Bill, watch.org uh, is one way that people, and I, I really do encourage you uh, to look at his website regularly because it's just full of really important news. I like the way your, your website's formatted because it's simple, but it just gives you really great headlines there. Thank is there you. any other way that people need to contact you or just that watch.org? Yeah, watch.org. And uh, also we're developing a site, uh, reach1billion.com. Uh, the site is in place. And the purpose of that is we have 1 billion people worldwide that attend replacement theology churches. Yes, they do. That's 100 million in America. Protestants and Catholics have no understanding of the biblical significance of the days we're living in in the state of Israel. And then uh, at watch.org, every Friday I put out a weekly summary of world news that's biblically relevant. It's a subscription. And the key is, and it's difficult to keep it to 18 to 20 pages as you can relate to, Jimmy, but it's just kind of a summary of what's happening in Israel, Middle East, biblically uh, related, and then also we focus a lot on... uh, uh, domestic issues in the United States that uh, affect us as Christians. Well, thank you, Bill, for being with me. I want you to come back now. Trey. Look forward so, to it. I, I know that everybody is that's watching this. This is this is amazing, and you know, Bible prophecy is empirical. Empirical. It's measurable. It's tangible. It's not some esoteric type of thing that kind of you know you get weird and you kind of have to make it up. Israel exists miraculously for the second time, according to Isaiah eleven. They exist. The things that the Bible said would happen in the end times are happening, have been happening for 74 years. And so, and what Bill has done in this book, Eye to Eye, I really do encourage you to get this book. If this is something that's interesting to you, let me say this. If you have unbelieving friends or cynical friends, let them read this book. Because this is talking about real life issues that are happening right now. These things are happening right now today. And once you've read this book uh, and listened to Bill, it makes you think differently. Because when you see these natural disasters that are happening, and then you see what's happening related to Israel, you begin to see there's a direct correlation. And so I do pray for this election that's coming up that people will get out and vote and that you'll vote according to morals and vote according to values and not just money and all the things that politicians promise, Republican and Democrat, but vote. And when the presidential election comes up, if we're still here, you know, in 2024, we need to remember that the foreign policy of whoever we elect as president of the United States affects every single individual in a very big way. And when they have bad foreign policy related to Israel, we're all in danger because of that. And so, again, Bill, thank you for being with me. We're going to have Bill back again. Now, we have our subscriber-only portion of the program coming up. I'm going to be answering questions that you guys, the subscribers, have written in. If you're not a subscriber, endtimes.com is where you can go. $7 a month, $77 a year. We would love to have you be a subscriber and you get the entire podcast here. Plus we have articles and videos that come out all week long talking about end times, talking about things that matter. So if you're not a subscriber, endtimes.com. 
$7 a month, $77 a year. Now, if you are a subscriber, you cannot watch the entire podcast on YouTube. You have to go to endtimes.com or respond to the email that we sent you as a subscriber. So if you're a subscriber, stay tuned.